Hello, I am Richard Sullivan. In the SCA, I'm known as Guillermo de Cervantes. And I've been talking to myself for the past 15 minutes, not realizing I wasn't recording. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've had some difficulties this weekend um, and technical, technical difficulties is one of them. Um, so I'm starting from scratch. And this class, it is about pyrography. Pyrography is the art of using heat to create art. And it's called pyrography for a very specific reason. Um, you can use heat on wood, wood burning. Wood burning is something that immediately brings to mind the craft because you can use heat on wood to create beautiful, beautiful art. I'll give you some examples of that. Uh, this is one of the earliest examples we have. It is a Peruvian gourd, and it is from 100 BC. So this gourd is uh, one of the earliest examples we have of pyrography. Um, I've also been told that there are examples of Romans using pyrography, but I haven't found them yet. Uh, but I will continue my search. Uh, and let's see here. Here's another example. I'll get back to that. This is a heart from Ireland. Uh, this is another wonderful example of pyrography. You can see the work, the craftsmanship. It's very simple. They do do a little bit of painting just to adorn, but it's mainly pyrography on the art, harp. And I'll give you a close-up. So this is a close-up of the work on the harp. And you can see the grooves cutting into the wood to create the designs. It's very beautiful work. Now, my current arts and sciences project is using uh, an inspiration that this is, a, this is from a 13th century Italian wedding chest. And this image is on the inside of the chest. So it's on the inside of the lid. But you can see the pyrography here and the pyrography outside. And so uh, they used a lot of pyrography to adorn, um, to adorn furniture all across the world. England, Spain, Italy, they all tended, Germany as well. They all tended to influence one another. Um, so those are some examples in history, um, but pyrography doesn't have to be done on wood. It could be done on leather. It could be done on bone. The limit is only your imagination. And so that's why we use pyrography. It's not wood burning. It's pyrography. It's a good general term that covers the gamut. So uh, where do you begin? Uh, I think it, it's a good idea to start with safety because safety is important to us in the SCA. Uh, when you're working a pyrography, you want to wear jeans and closed toe shoes. Sneakers are fine. You don't want to use sandals. Uh, when you're doing the work, it tends to pop. Fire pops. Period pyrography is using actual fire. Uh, it's, and, and using modern tools, which I'll show you shortly, that can be painful if the iron goes where it isn't supposed to go. And I have been burned. This is not a hobby for somebody who has bronchitis or somebody that is, um, has an aversion to pain. Occasionally you get burned. Uh, it is not a hobby for somebody with back problems. Doing period pyrography, I find it's, I have to stand. I can't, I can't sit to do period pyrography. Um, safety wise, uh, some people might use safety goggles or a respirator. I don't do the, either of those, but they might be recommended if you have issues. Um, some people might use creams. Um, I use, uh, I keep a, a bucket of water on hand. Maybe an extinguisher might be a good idea. Uh, so these are things that you want to think of well in advance just to protect yourself and uh, and your furniture. I use a metal pan underneath my cauldron to protect the table I'm working on. 
So uh, safety first, always think about safety. Uh, so I'm gonna give you two examples of period and modern tools that we use. This is a, looks lo a lot like a soldering iron, uh, pyrography or wood burning uh, iron. You can buy them at Michael's. Uh, this one is my favorite because it has a gauge on it where I can control the heat. And that's very handy. Um, and when you buy them, they come with a set of nibs of different sizes and varieties. So you can go for different effects uh, with your work or designs. You just screw it off. You just screw the tip off. And then you screw the other one on. Uh, if you really want to, uh, if you don't want to stop in your work, you might want to have some pliers on hand because okay? when it's hot, you don't want to wait for it to cool and heat. You just have pliers, you could take it off and put on the, the next one and get and keep working. Speed is valuable. We all ha have things to do. So uh, there are ways of speeding things up. So a pair of pliers, you know, go a long way. So the different nibs are important because a straight nib is the primary tool if you want to do lines uh, or curved lines. Um, whereas a, a flat nib is what you would use if you're doing, uh, let's say, shading. Those are my two primary tools that I use. There are others, and I will show them to you. Uh, so this is, now I'm going to show you the period tools that I use with a fire. This is a uh, iron poker. I got my first set of three from uh, a fellow pyrography artist. They gifted it to me. But I found I needed more because to do the work, a hot iron poker will only stay hot for seven seconds. And that's not very long. Uh, and so I found a blacksmith at Gulfport, and I requisitioned him to make me sets of three for each different uh, variety of uh, tip. So I'm going to use my, my shirt as a base. So you see this is a very flat tip, and this is very good for lines. I would use the tip on my, just the very tip of it, or I would lay it flat like this. Depends on what kind of line I want. And so I would either do the tip or I do flat. But you see it's, it's length kind of requires you to stand. There, it's not a work that I can do sitting down with this. I can use the, uh, the modern tool I can sit down with. It's flexible, the wire is flexible, but to really get the motion to pull off the, the right curves or designs, I kind of need to stand for this kind of thing. So this is a flat tip, and I'm sorry, this is a straight tip. This one is a flat tip. See, it looks a little bit like a triangle on here. I'm trying to use my shirt, so <laughs> it's a little confusing. Let's go over here. There we go. So you see it looks like a triangle. Now, it's flat because when you work, you're going to work like this. Let me stand up again. You're going to put, there we are. We're going to put the nib, the nib flat on the surface. And this allows you to do shading on the work. And this, the shading is what makes it pop. It makes it look three-dimensional. So this is the tool that you would use to shade. Um, we also have a rounded tip. Uh, it's very, just a little round tip for, you can use this for shading as well. Uh, or perhaps you might want to have uh, circles. You know, if, so if you heat up the iron poker and you just want to do like a straight, have a big thick circle for patterns, that's useful. And the last one is similar, but not too, a little bit different, a pointy one. And this allows you for a very more, more fine work, almost like pointillism in a way, 
where you can, you know, put a texture by putting maybe dots, burn dots into certain work. And, uh, and so these four tools, I have three of each of them. And the way I work with them is I take out, I use my cauldron. There we go. This cauldron I bought, uh, I live in Miami. And in Miami, there are quite a few places called botanicas. And uh, botanicas are spiritual stores. And I came in and I bought me a cauldron. And it's small, it's perfect for my use. And I, what I do is I, hi guys, <laughs> I see Wallace, I see my mama, I see Tatania. Thank you for being here. Uh, I put the, uh, the uh, pokers in like this, but I have three of them in lodged into the wood. And so I have three in the cauldrons at a time. And that allows me to continue the work because the fire will constantly keep them hot. I pull one out, the fire keeps working the other one. So I can continue the work. I don't have to stop. I can always have uh, an iron poker ready to do the work. So how do we work? I'm working a project now. I'm working two projects. Uh, one is my arts and science project, and the other one is for Crown Lust. Uh, I'm creating a gift uh, for uh, the consorts, and that gift is a, a spoon, a wooden spoon. Uh, and this wooden spoon can be used in a kitchen, or the consort can use it to keep their knight in line. Uh, it's your choice, their choice. Uh, this is a standard wooden spoon. I, if I had the choice, I wouldn't pick this spoon, but I don't have a choice. This has got a finish on it, and I'd rather work with raw wood, if possible. But you got to work with what you get at Publix. <laughs> I bought a, a bunch of these spoons. There, there's a set, there's a spatula, there's a strainer, there's a spoon. And I've been putting roses on the back of these spoons as a gift uh, to give to the consorts. This is an example of a plain spoon. The next step in the pyrography process is to draw. Let's see if I can create better light here. There we go. That's better. So you see this is a drawing. You can see the drawing in pencil uh, of the rose. And standard, uh, it's just a standard pencil. And uh, it gets the job done. You can make mistakes because all you're going to do is erase it or burn over it. And then the next step is to do the line pyrography, just a standard line. So what you see here, there we go. Sorry, I need, wish I had better lighting. There you go. So this is a line drawing with pyrography of the rose. And it's a bit more detailed. And uh, then the last step or the next to last step is actually doing the shading. So this is an example of the rose with the added shading. You can see that it may, kind of makes it come to life. So shading really is of a value to, to make it work. Remember I told you the triangular nib is what you use for the shading. And um, so to draw it is a benefit if a person has a skill to draw. Uh, not everybody does. And some people might use, uh, find images uh, from different sources and they may uh, get like a tracing paper from the art store um, or copy paper. And instead of drawing it freehand, they may just take an image and kind of put the image onto the source using these different kinds of papers. So you don't necessarily have to be a great artist or you know know how to draw as long as you can follow the lines. Um, so that's one option. Um, but it definitely helps to draw uh, as, a, as a craft. Uh, 
shading is uh, just a matter of knowing where your light source is. For example, uh, my light source is coming at me this way. So if I'm going to decide to do shading, and you don't have to, you can. You saw with the harps, the, the the harps had no shading. It was just designs. But if you wanted to do shading, the first thing you'd have to decide on is where is the light coming from. If you look at me, the light's coming from this direction. If you decide that the light is coming from a direction, then you know you need to shade the other direction. So you're shading the opposite of the light source. Um, so that's really what you need to think about when it comes to adding shading or value. Um, so next thing I want to talk about is doing period pyrography the other tools that you need. Um, I think I'll start with the bellows. Before I could even start in this craft, I realized I had to have a bellows. I didn't have a bellows, so as a true Scadian, I decided to make one. And that was my very first arts and sciences project. This was my very first arts and sciences project. I researched how to make a bellows. And the bellows is used to add oxygen to the fire. Okay, let's see. Silly question. Hi, Wallace. Can I use pyrography on some leather armor I want to craft? Yes. Pyrography is a general term. It could be used on wood, leather. It could be used on bone, any source you can think of. I would suggest that you get leather similar to the leather in your armor and get some practice on I wouldn't go directly to your leather armor you got to develop the technique a little bit just to get a feeling for it um, so but thank you for that question um, so the bellows job is to add oxygen to fire and to keep it going and and and, and keep it alive speed up the heating process keep the heating process because that's your friend flame is not your friend the heat is your friend that's what gets the iron pokers ready no problem so so I crafted this once I did my research from those of you that cook might get a kick out of this I was walking in Publix and I found these wonderful Tostona presses now if you don't know what Tostonas are they're squished uh, plantains bananas and these came with another little wooden wooden piece on a hinge and you would squish the bananas with that other wooden piece and I saw those and I said these things are the perfect size for a little bellows don't you think and the leather the leather I got from a uh, abandoned couch <laughs> when I first joined the SEA I was I was hunting couches that were left on the side of the street. I was I was ripping the leather off of them for material. And this is one of the uses I found for them. There's a copper there's a copper uh, uh, tube that goes from the inside to the out and it's wrapped in leather. And uh, there's a little hole here which is a valve. And there's a little inside there's a little leather strap or a, a, a leather uh, yeah, a leather strap to catch the wind on the inside. So when I do this, it, when I open it, the air goes in. When I close it, it gets stuck and it has to come out the tip. This uh, baby, I was very proud of it. It served me for about three years. Uh, if you can see how dirty it is and how tore up it is, you can see that this is not a clean art. Uh, don't go into this art form expecting to uh, walk off and uh, be ready to go out. It's very dirty. Your hands are going to get dirty. You're dealing with fire. You're dealing with soot. You're dealing with ash. It's going. It's a messy art form. Definitely not for somebody that's OCD. Uh, about a month or so ago, I had to retire this baby. I had to admit to myself that it was seeing its last day. It just wasn't getting the strength that I needed. And so I went to all our wonderful Amazon and I ordered me a new bellows and I got this baby. 
Ain't this pretty? It's much prettier than mine, I have to admit. We'll see how long it takes for it to get nasty. But uh, you can see the hole, same hole, and you can actually see the leather inside the hole that, that catches the air when I close it. And uh, this baby's got I love it. I was so happy. I actually got it the very next day. That was really a happy day for me. I actually posted my picture. I was very happy on my belt. So this is a valuable tool to keep the air on the fire, keep it hot. The next thing we need to talk about is the fire. Fire needs a lot of love. Uh, it takes about an hour of TLC to get the fire ready for the work. And so the first thing I do is I have my cauldron and I put layers of different kinds of fuels in my cauldron. And I'll show you some examples. This is a very standard, hello, where are you? There we go. Very standard coal that you would find in any, any uh, Publix, you buy a bag of coal. You want the self-lighting, easy lighting coal uh, it, it, it's a wonderful fuel, but it burns very quickly. And so you balance that out with a few others. This is actually wood coal. This is actually wood burnable, kind of what's left over in a charcoal fire. And, uh, it burns a little bit longer and hotter. And, uh, I like the big chunks of these. And then I also have some actual wood oak. This is a harder wood, takes longer for the fire to catch on it, but it lasts the longest. It may even last your entire time working with the fire and the wood burning. The last fuel is these little wood chips. And they're just, again, it's an, they're like a, a means of keeping the fire going. They burn very quickly, but uh, it's just another, uh, kind of fuel that keeps it going. So I have layers inside the cauldron uh, and once it's lit I use the stand these, these beauties to keep the fire lit if it goes out and it will go out and I use uh, basic uh, fuel you know all clean fuel and it takes me about an hour of hitting the fire with this and the bellows and and keeping it lit for an hour, going, adding more fuel as I go, alternating the fuel sources. And after about an hour of doing that, something really cool happens. I call it the fire's kiss. Because I'll be working the bellows. The fire will go out. And without adding any more lighter fuel, it's hot enough. I'll be working the bellows. And suddenly the fire just comes back to life all by itself and it's such an exciting moment because I know now I can do the work now it's ready it's hot enough for me to do the work it's very gratifying when you get that moment and I call that the fire's kiss because all of a sudden it comes it's like the fire is alive all on its own well I help with the, with the bellows but <laughs> you know what I mean uh, so that's really the goal and then I take my three pokers and I put dig bury them into uh, the the coals and the wood but I do it in such a way that they're going to overlap each other because uh, because that keeps them in place there they they hold the other pokers down you don't want to fall they're going to fall out once in a while but generally they, they put crossing them in the work uh, helps them stay in place, which is where you want the heat. You want them to get hot. And that's, uh, and, and as you're doing the work and you're switching from iron poker to iron poker, every few minutes you have to keep adding fuel to the fire. So you, every few minutes you'll add more wood coals or you'll add three of these babies, the, the traditional coals. Um, you know, once the fire is going, you really don't need these babies the little itty bitty chips. Um, but I think we need to talk a little bit about the smoke. And where you do the work is important. You want to have good ventilation. You might think that's obvious, but so you can't do this indoors. You want to have um, 
light. And the last thing you really want to have is some kind of cover. Um, it's a long story of how I got the beautiful location that I currently work out of, which is my balcony. Um, the balcony that I work from is perfect. Uh, my landlord gave me special permission, which uh, I was very happy about. It gives me the covering I need. I could work in the rain. I could work at night if I need to add light. I got light I can add. And I certainly have the ventilation. Uh, so it's that's that covers all three. Um, so if you're going to do the work of period pyrography, you're going to have smoke. And uh, getting the timing right knowing keeping an eye on the smoke as you work again some people will use a respirator some people will use goggles myself i tend to uh be aware of the smoke and i may see where it's at and if it hits me in the face i'm holding my breath for a moment i might move to the side you know um but that that is a factor um so we've covered a lot of territory Let's see. We've got the pokers. We got that. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about where to find your wood. Generally, you want wood to be a clean source. You want it to be as white as possible or as plain as possible. Try to avoid wood that has any knots in it. Um, course you can be creative and inspired maybe you'll think a knot looks like an eye or something and you can work maybe work that into your art um, the problem with knots and things of that sort is that it, it it's obviously it's a blemish um, but also uh, it can create that it won't burn as well and so you might have to spend more time burning those 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 blemishes to get that straight line. It could be more complicated. So you want to try to get a clean surface like a canvas. Uh, where would you find them? You can go to Home Depot. I found these ta beautiful table tops, wooden table tops about this, about a yard size. Uh, you can go to a hardware store. You can go to Michael's. Uh, Michael's has a wonderful selection. A lot of their wood has been treated and it's harder to really burn treated wood but uh, sometimes we got to work with what we have and uh, so so that's that's really all I need to you can use Cypress uh, lighter woods are better um, uh, cedar I'm sorry I said Cypress I meant cedar wood is a better is a good word wood source once you get your wood the first step is you want to sand it now sandpaper for those of you that may never have worked with sandpaper, comes with different grades. And so you want to get a heavy grade and a lighter grade. You use the heavier grade at that point when you're first cleaning your wood and you're preparing it. And you're getting the wood ready. And you want to sand it nice and clean for you to start the work. Uh, at the end of the job, let's say, remember, uh, remember the spoons? Uh, this this is actually at the stage where I would sand it lightly. And that's why we use a lighter grade because uh, I don't want to blemish or change my artwork. But you do want to clean it a little bit. And uh, so so just as, as, a, as a way of cleaning the wood after, because it could be grimy from the work and whatnot. And um, the very last step, once you've finished the work and you've sanded it, the very last step, if you want to, you don't have to, but gives it a nice finish, buy a little can of polyurethane and uh, put three coats on your work uh, to preserve it. And the first coat would be along the grain second coat would be across the grain and the third coat would be again along the grain and that and that would give a nice finished look to your project that's the very last step um, so we've talked about uh, uh, preparing preparing and sanding uh, the wood and we've talked about drawing on the image 
Uh, you could use a ruler. Uh, there are different tools. Let's talk a little bit about inspiration. Um, so this is, I've shown this earlier. This is my current project that I'm working on. Uh, this comes from a 16th century, I'm sorry, 13th century cedar chest from Italy. It was a wedding chest. It's the inside cover of that chest. And it took me a year to find that. I was looking for a project. I wanted to do a wood burning art site project. Where did I look? I, uh, where did I look? I looked at, I went to the library. Of course, I looked in Google. Um, I, I searched uh, 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 different, different examples of, um, let's see here. Uh, uh, different books, uh, Pinterest. It took me a long time. But this is a project, these projects with wood burning, they take time. You know, when I, when I, the current project I'm working on, I know is going to take me about six months to finish because it's a big chest. And so if you, you really want to fall in love with that project that you're working on, because uh, you're going to be stuck with it for a while. You don't want to get sick of it. And I, I wanted to find something that made me go, wow, this is great. Get excited about doing it. You know, uh, Stephen King wrote in his book on writing, on how to write, you always want your work to pop. And uh, that's, you, you need to feel that in your heart. You need to feel that pop, that inspiration. I do that when I sing. I try to find a song that I just adore, and that inspires me to work on it. And that heart gives you the inspiration to create something beautiful. And so searching for that in any, any of these different places, that can take time. Uh, but once you find it, then you're off to the races, you know. Uh, so let's see. Um, we talked about the uh, tools. We talked about the shading. Let's see. Um, what I'm, one of the things I'm doing now in preparation for the next class, a more advanced class, is as I'm doing the work, I'm doing uh, 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 I'm taking notes on my process, and uh, I'm reviewing that right now. Um, and I do want to review in case because I know some of you came on later. Um, to prepare to do this work, you want to wear jeans. You want to wear a dirty shirt that you don't give a damn about. You want to wear close-toed shoes for safety. Um, you want to make sure that <laughs> you want to make sure that your spouse or your loved ones know that you're going to be occupied, um, and hopefully they'll support you while you're working. I tend to get very uh, focused and almost obsessed while I'm working. I get so focused on the fire so focused on uh, on the craft that I forget to hydrate, I forget to eat, and I could be working for six hours and I wouldn't even know that much time has passed. Um, so before you start the work, have a good meal and have hydration nearby. Prepare ahead of time. And if you have a loved one in your life, you know, them checking on you once in a while, asking you if you want a sandwich, something of that sort, that would be uh, useful. And it, because uh, the work kind of tends to take over your attention and your focus. So preparing in that way, you know, walk your dog before you start the work. Kiss your loved ones before you start the work. Because when you start the work, that becomes everything. Um, and then you have to pull yourself away from the work because it's once I get a good fire going and I've worked it for a few hours and 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 it feels exhilarating just keeping it keeping it being able to work in a routine of of uh, feeding the fire burning bellows feeding the fire burning bellows this process is a very 
smooth process and, it, and it's enjoyable. It's, it's a kind of meditation that puts you in a very comfortable place. Uh, but at some point you have to stop and sometimes it feels like you have to pull yourself away. If life isn't do it, of course, you got to do it yourself and you have to know when enough is enough. Um, and then one good way of doing that is by limiting how much you draw in advance because remember we're drawing our work before we do it. This is our guiding line. So if we can set reasonable goals for ourselves, then it limits how much work we can do as well. <laughs> so, um, so how we do the burning uh, of the tools. I want to focus a little bit back on um, the straight edge tool. You need to know a few things about timing. When uh, you pull it out of the fire, obviously it's really hot. And, and when you touch the wood, the wood, if you're not careful, it's almost like melting butter. And so you want to be mindful of, 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 of just the pressure you put on the wood with the tool. You know, maybe just lightly touching it like a caress, you know, is my one for a lighter, a lighter uh, line. Or if you want a deeper line, you might want to go for that, you know, pushing it in with a hot, hot poker and you get a good groove. It all depends on the texture of the line. Um, I find, for example, I might want to work on another area that needs a deeper line and then after a few seconds remember it only stays hot for seven seconds after a few seconds then I might switch to an area that might need a lighter line for example a face you know I don't want a deep groove for the face I just want a little uh, just a, a hint of a line and so I might want to wait until I know it's cooled off just enough to pull off that 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 subtle line so so when you use it is an issue and how much pressure you use is an issue and also in general we're not using our wrist to do the lines it's more in the elbow especially when it comes to curves you know, you want to keep a solid, you want to be solid and steady, which is why you want to keep your wrist somewhat locked. But to pull off the line, you want to use your elbow to get a curve. And sometimes you might need to uh, kind of lean with it. And sometimes you might need to do a little shuffle of your feet because it might be a longer line and you don't want to stop. You might have to shuffle your feet a little bit. So there's a little kinesiology that comes into uh, doing the work, and the only way to do it, learn it really is to do it, um, to really build your technique of uh, capturing capturing the lines or the shades, you know. And so, so what I said about um, timing is true with the shading as well. This is a much larger surface. Oops, where am I? There we go. This is a much larger surface, this triangle. And so if this is very hot, you can imagine you're going to have a very darker burn, which you might want for parts of your work. And so if it's that hot, sorry, and you're placing the triangle on the wood thus, you know that that is going to be a very dark, it's almost like an iron, right? Like a, like a classic iron that you might find in iron. Uh, for your clothes, uh, well, this is an iron for the wood. And, and if you drag it while you're burning, you can get a nice, interesting, dark color, which is, which if you wanted to do, let's say, a surface that was completely black, not shading, just black, uh, that might be what you would do. You want to burn it hard 
and drag it along that surface until it cools and just keep doing it to make that whole surface black, uh, which is one of the things I'm planning to do with uh, my work. Um, but if you want to do an actual a gradation like we see with the spoon and the rose, you might put more of the attention of the tip in the corners and just lightly pull off the pressure as you're moving away. So again, uh, if I'm put, I want it darker, let's see here, there we are. So if I want it darker, but I want it to, uh, I'll give it a second and then I might pull out and pull away so it have a, a more textured withdrawal. And then it won't, it will go from dark to light, which is what you want with shading. So uh, I think the last thing I'm going to do is just show you what I'm working on. My uh, current arts and sciences project is a chest. Uh, I've shown you the image of the chest. I'll show it to you again. Uh, this is uh, the actual image that of my inspiration. Now, uh, what it is is Italian knights who have parked themselves in their tents outside of Jerusalem. And so you see if uh, I can get a little closer, there's a lot of detail work. Now, you can see Jerusalem in the background over the wall. And uh, right now, I, I fit stage one of my project was just to do the line drawing. So this is the front of the chest. You can see the Jerusalem and the background. Now what I decided to do is I took that image of five knights and I'm wrapping it around the chest. So that's a second knight on the left. And then they got the other knight on the right. And you see again, this is just the line drawing that has been burned in to the work. Right now I'm at the stage where I'm adding the detail. And one of those details is the Jeru is the background Jerusalem and you see the circles. That's where I'm at. And the very back of the chest is two nights back to back in their tent. So uh, again, you just see the line drawings. Now I'm adding detail. I haven't done the, uh, haven't added Jerusalem yet. I haven't added the patterns. Uh, now each of the uh, knights, their their armor has a little pattern on it. I need to add for them. So it's just the detail work that I'm adding at this point. Later I will do the shading, uh, but I'm not there yet. On the very top, we have something kind of cool. I'm very, I'm excited about. My, my goal is to have the front tent and the back tent meet at the top. And I want to get a knob and put it right on top. So it, 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 the knob is like the top of the tent. And uh, what I plan to do across this stripe is I'm going to make it as black as I can with my triangular shading tool so that the triscals will pop off in white. So this whole strip here is going to be black, 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 except for the triscals, which, I, which I'm hoping will really jump out on the top of the uh, work. So, so far this has been uh, five sessions. Each session went on, went for about five or six hours. Um, and so finding the time to commit is difficult. Our mundane life takes a lot out of us. We have responsibilities, you know, and so I have to have a full day basically set aside to be able to do this work. And when do we have that a full day? So I sometimes I can only do it like once every few weeks um, where I sit, I have to take care of everything and then I have me time. And that's what I do on my me time. So I hope this has been helpful. And it, I hope it's been inspirational. I'm open to any questions you might have. Uh, you can always message me. Uh, pyrography is a wonderful form 
Um, when I started, I, I had a skill in drawing and I started working with scroll work as and painting. And then I started testing myself in other art forms. And it's, that's when I started doing tooling and leather working. And then I discovered this art of pyrography. And that's where I'm living now. Uh, in time, I do have the goal of doing metalworking. Um, that's, I see that in my future, engraving and uh, etching. Uh, but right now, I'm living in pyrography. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me today. And feel free to ask me any questions if you have any. My name, again, is Richard Sullivan in the SCA. I am Lord Guillermo de Cervantes. Buenas noches.